All right, today I'm going to tie this little uh, Brookie Slayer called Coachman Caddis. Hook I got advice is a check nymph style hook, but you could use basically any curved hook. Fly emulates is a host of a number of different uh, bugs, but none in particular. It's a general attractor, but it's really, really good for brook trout, and in addition to that, works very well for cutthroat. I'm using a white thread here. You could also use red or green. The color of the thread, I don't find the matter as much as the profile of the fly. First material we're going to tie in is red tinsel. Alternatively, you could also use red floss. This is basically the, the tag of the fly. This is what draws the attention. Red works really well. In addition to that, purple or blue will also work, but I have had most success with red and purple. I've used this fly extensively in uh, Michigan, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. So I'm going to tie. I tied in the, the tinsel right now. All I'm doing is basically wrapping it to give it the tag. And the reason why I stated best hook to use for this is a curved style is once we get the rest of the profile of this fly done with the wing and the hackle, this bun end is actually the end that sits down under the water film. So it's what the fish will see when they look up in addition to the profile of the wings. And it, makes, it gives it the appearance of basically an emergent insect or a fly that's sitting there on the water about to lay eggs. Add a little bit of uh, UV resin to the tag here just to make it a little bit more durable. Because trout do have those teeth, depending on what species you hit. They hit that tinsel, they with their teeth, they'll shred it. And I like my flies to last more than one fish. So now that we got the tinsel in, the next material we're going to tie in is peacock curl. Taking three to four strands of peacock curl, I'll snip off the tips because the tips are the most brittle. Tie that approximately about the three quarters point. And wrap it back to where I stop that tinsel. From there, what I like to do to make the hack or the hurl even more durable is I'll wrap it around the thread itself. The thread basically reinforces the hurl. And then I'm gonna wrap it forward. And it need be, just wrap it around again until I get this big puffy thorax area. Get it to about the three quarters point because that's where we're gonna tie in the wing and then just tie off this hurl. Now this hurl here will withstand several fish easily. I'm gonna readjust the hook slightly so that I can get it sitting straight up here. Makes it a little bit easier when I tie in this wing. Through the hair of the stacker to get the tips aligned, and what I want is I want this wing to extend just past the far bend of the hook because once I cinch it down, it's gonna basically push up and now it's gonna sit flush. And that, that allows the fish to see that wing profile from underneath the water. Do a couple of loose wraps and then I'm gonna cinch this wing. And pull all these butt ends up and then jump my thread forward. Building a slight little thread dam here. And then bring it back. And now I can lock everything in and then trim this off and give it a small little head on the fly. Any of uh, the hackle or any of the hair that spun on you, all you do is just go back and just trim it off. It's not imperative that you get it perfect because, again, what they're going to see is basically underneath. So this is the profile of what the trout's going to see. They're going to see that tag end, they're going to see the hurl, they're going to see the shape of that wing. Too often, as tires, we look at it from our perspective. You have to look at it from an underneath perspective. There I'm going to tie in the hackle. The hackle is dry fly hackle. This is from a saddle. The wing is going to provide the majority of the buoyancy. The hackle is going to help because it's going to trap some air bubbles. I trimmed slightly one small portion of the barbs on the stem. And what that does is when I make that first wrap, the stem is going to be the first thing that hits it, and that allows you to control the direction of where that hackle is going to go. 
and then all I do is basically trim off excess stem. From there, we just do the hackle wrap. <coughs> Usually three to four turns, and then just capture that hackle. And then trim it off. Be careful not to cut your thread. What it helps with flies that have a lot of stuff going on up near the eye, Instead of using a standard whip finish tool, just use a half hitch tool. And that'll allow you to throw a series of half hitches on there to finish off the fly. That is awesome. Trim off the thread. And there you have the complete fly with that being your profile right there. Beautiful. Amazing pattern for brook trout, cutthroats, rainbows, browns, but mainly uh, brook trout and cutthroat are the two main things. Cool. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.